good morning to all of you, uh, uh, my dear colleagues, particularly Dr. Kumar and all, all the chairpersons. And at the very outset, I convey my sincere regards to Dr. Jayant Panda, Dr. Anuj Maheshwari and his team, and Dr. Murganathan. So for inviting me to talk on this uh, very important platform of ACP. I have been interested to talk on our nature's defense or strength role of gut flora uh, in health and disease. You all know that this is an, a very important topic and you'll see that, uh, am I visible? My slides are visible? Yes, yes, your slides are visible. Yes. So the very important concept of uh, use of microbes in our lives is a biblical references and first of our literature dr mechnikov who was a basically a russian scientist nobel laureate who also the father of the innate immunity and described the phagocytosis he has first described how lactobacillus can be used to prolong our life and prevent diseases so it is just only a 300 to 400 square meter of a body surface area in our body where a man meets microbes. This is basically a dynamic interplay. And this is just like a tennis court where there is more than 3 million genes of the bacterial genome are there. But to the contrary, the human population has got only 35,000 genes. It has got a hundred trillion living bacteria in our intestine and over 500 species in human colon. And you know that the, each individual has got his own bacterial fingerprint. There is no similarity, absolute similarity to man to man. So far the microbes population and its variety is concerned. There is a significant cross talk between the bacteria and the host. Each bacteria can turn on almost more than 100 genes in our body. Toll receptors on the dendritic cells and macrophages can be activated. And our gut contains complex neuroendocrine system, which shows the interplay between the microbes and the host. There is also quorum sensing, where molecules are secreted in the form of chemical substances and gases, which explain the bacterial community behavior and activation of the virulence genes. In fact, this is the what we have. Now, before going to its use in our life, death, I mean uh, uh, disease and health, I would just like to explain some definitions in the form of microbiome, which is basically a collective genomes of the microorganisms in a particular environmental setting. In fact, this microbiome can be considered as a virtual organ in our body, which has got its own dynamicity, own uh, capacity, and own uh, efficiency and disefficiency. Microbiota is basically the community of the microorganisms themselves, and microbiota diversity is very important because it has got a different species, uh, dependent on its diversity indices, how evenly it is distributed in their community is very important because it has been shown that the lower diversity has been considered as a marker of the dysbiosis, where you'll find that there is the has been found in autoimmune disease and cardiometabolic problems. How we can study the GART microbiota by composition of the microbiota, next generation sequencing, whole genome shotgun sequencing, metabolic products which are coming in the form of metabolic methods. What does microbiota do? They do, actually, they work on the non-digestible substrates of the dietary fibers and endogenous intestinal mucus. These fermentation supports the growth of the specialist microbes that particularly produce the short-chain fatty acids and gases, and the major short-chain fatty acids are acetate, propionate, and butyrate. We'll see that the main energy source of the human is the butyrate, which is basically the main energy source of the human colonocytes, can induce apoptosis in the cancer cells, can activate the intestinal gluconeogenesis, and it has got a beneficial effects on glucose and energy homeostasis. On the 
butyrate is essential for the epithelial cells because to consume large amount of the oxidation through beta oxidation, it is an imp important substrate. It is generating hypoxia, which maintains the oxygen balance in the gut and also it preventing the microbiota dysgenesis. On the other hand, propionate is transferred to liver, which regulates gluconeogenesis. It has got an acetylene signal in through which interactions with the gut fasciate acid receptors are there. Acetate is the most abundant short chain fatty acids, which is an essential metabolite for the growth of the bacteria, reaches the peripheral tissues, influences the cholesterol me mechanism. It has got a play on central appetite regulation. Randomized trial showed that higher the production of short chain fatty acids with having the lower diet induced obesity and insulin resistance. Butyrate and propionate, not acetate, seem to control the GRAT hormones and reduce appetite and food intake. So these other products in the gut produce in the form of trimethylamine and idol propionic acid. I, trimethylamine is from the dietary phosphatidylcholine that depends uh, on the gut microbiota. That's its amount of the blood varies. And it is basically reduces the risk of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular risk. Indole propionic acid is highly correlated with the dietary fiber intake and it reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, this is basically a schematic diagram of the role of the gut microbiota in health and disease, where you'll find that the, it depends on the pH, excessive protein consumption, sugar intake, saturated fatty acid intake, proton pump inhibitors, and antibiotics reduces the short chain fatty acids, increases the PMAO production, LPAs, increased cardiovascular disease, gut inflammation, insulin resistance, cognitive decline, and even in the risk of diarrhea. To the contrary, these are prevented by, the, by taking the probiotic. So this is the um, chart showing different foods in the form of cheese, yogurt, loaf, FODMAP diet, artificial sweeteners, polyphenols, which are important. For. So uh, coming to the microbiota in the disease, you see it has got a close correlation with the obesity. And a large study from the UK twins found that the genus Christinel cella was rare in the overweight people and when given to the germ-free mice prevented weight gain. So diet-induced obesity and the metabolic complication by a variety of mechanisms by immune dysregulation, altered energy regulation, gut hormone alteration, pro-inflammatory mechanism, and as well as the crossing the blood gut brain. And all these microbiota diversity has got an implication on the health because the lower bacterial diversity is associated with inflammatory bowel disease, psoriatic arthritis, type 1 diabetes, celiac disease, obesity, and all. So transplanting feces from a lean, healthy donor to the recipient with the metabolic syndrome reduced the beta insulin sensitivity accompanied by altered microbiota composition. Food and drugs have got an impact on the gut microbiota, particularly among the drugs, is very important. And also the sucralose, aspartame, and saccharin have been shown to disrupt the balance of the diversity of the microbiota. These are used as a sweeteners in, uh, in uh, commonly used. So food additives to preserve it is like emulsifiers. It particularly contains carboxymethyl cellulose and polysorbate that reduce the microbial diversity as compared to other emulsifiers. So there is a controversy between the vegans and omnivores. And some studies have shown that the vegans contain better microbiome than omnivores. Some study doesn't support it. Gluten-free diet has got an implications and recent observational study have shown that it has got an increased risk of the heart disease and gluten avoidance. Low fat uh, FODMAP diet has got it is associated with a reduced proportions of the bifidobacterium in patients with irritable bowel syndrome. So, it low fat FODMAP diet leads to profound changes 
in the microbiota and its metabolism. Role of my medications is very important, particularly with drugs like osmotic laxity, progesterone, TNF alpha inhibitors. Upatadine they uh, has got a uh, negative impact on the microbiota composition, and effects of commonly prescribed proton pump inhibitors also have got an impact on microbiota composition. So antibiotics clearly has an effect on gut microbes. Manipulating a microbiota through diet is also very important because it has been shown that not only it changes the population of the microbiota, but it immediately changes its metabolites. So some say that we are killing the bacteria in the form of using the uh, sorts of sanitizers, oral gargles, hand washing, all these things. Let's see well, how we hear because the probiotics and the prebiotics are the uh, substances which can alter this microbiota population in the health and disease. Probiotics are basically the live bacteria and the yeast that has, has administered in a viable form in an adequate amount can have an, a beneficial effect to the human health. To the contrary, prebiotics are ba basically the substrate which is selectively used by the host microorganisms in the health. For example, some sorts of carbohydrates. Please, time is getting over, please, sir. Yes, these are some prebiotics and probiotics. Common probiotics are there. These are the potential implications of probiotics. And probiotics can prevent, mitigate the disease. I am not going to its mechanism of action, how it works, but it has got a good implications and all. And short chain fatty acids also. There is a lot of discussions is there. So um, I'm not going to detail all these things. It has got a favorable actions in the inflammatory bile disease, as well as in case of uh, ventilator associated pneumonia, particularly it has got uh, uh, actions of clostridium, difficile, infection, H. pylori, how it works, and a, uh, antibiotic associated diarrhea, and as well as it is has got an VRE prevention, all these things are there. We are now thinking about the safety of the probiotics. Lots of randomized trials is going on and it is very dangerous to use in severe pancreatitis. So not all probiotics are the same. These are the general guidelines, future trials is there, ongoing trials. So to conclude, we are entering an era where we can increasingly modify with the help through food and measure the effects to our microbes. Fiber is the key nutrient as a prebiotic for healthy microbiome and has been overlooked while diabetes have raised over the sugars and diet. The adverse effects on microbiome of the drugs and processed food ingredients can no longer be ignored. So we need more clinical evidence that can be translated into the clinical practice, ideally through our cities, that use consistent matrices of prebiotics or probiotics, or also fecal microbiota transplantation to assess the changes in that microbiota composition in the health outcomes and disease. So thank you very much.